All right, so we're going to take a look at using Desmos to create assessments, and I'm going to do two formative assessments. One is uh, grade six, unit one, lesson 16 from Illustrative Mathematics. This is the cool down. And then I also have grade three, module one, lesson four from Eureka Math, and this is the exit ticket. And I'll show you some different ways to do these in the Desmos Activity Builder. So if you head on over to teacher.desmos.com, on the left hand side here, you'll see custom. And I have some activities that I've created in the past. I'm going to go to new activity. And I'm going to title this delete later because I'm going to delete this, but title it something uh, appropriate for whatever you're creating and put a description in there. So if someone else is using it, they know exactly what they're getting. Uh, create activity. And when you come to your dashboard, it's kind of like a slide deck that will run across the top here horizontally. And these are the different uh, ways to engage in the content. All right, typically what I do is where it says add a title or instructions, I usually just put the number there, like number one, if it's number one. Um, it just keeps it easier for me because I, I end up making a lot of these and I don't need to put new instructions up there. Where I tend to put the instructions is I put them in a note. So the first thing I'll do here is I'll add a note. And this is what I want the students to see that they're not going to engage in. So if I go back to my activity over here, my cool down for illustrative mathematics, the question here is choose two figures that have the same service area, but different volumes. So let's go ahead and copy that text. And just be careful when you copy and paste text that's a PDF, sometimes you get these line breaks in here that you have to just kind of fix. And what I would recommend doing is just go up to preview and see what this looks like. So this is what I have so far. All right, so this is what the students would see. Now, what else do I want them to do with this? Um, I might want them, they have to choose two figures. So maybe I want them to circle two of them. There is a feature in the activity builder for sketching where they can draw and you can put a custom background. So I might do something, uh, let me take a screenshot here of this image, go back to my activity builder. I'm going to pick a sketch and instead of the background, I can do a, a graph or a blank one. I'm going to do a custom image and I'm going to select that screenshot that I just took. All right, and these are right next to each other, but you could drag this on top of the other one. Um, I kind of like having them next to each other, but let's jump into preview again and see what this looks like. All right, so kids would see this, they'd come over here and then they would maybe circle two of these, all right? The other option you have, and you know, instead of doing a sketch, you could just do media, which would just put a picture on there that they, could, they couldn't edit or anything like that, all right? Uh, you could also do a checkbox because we want to choose two figures that have the same surface area but different volumes. So instead of doing, uh, you could do multiple choice and just put all the combinations there, but I'm going to do checkbox. And in here, I'm going to have uh, C, D, and E. And you would just put check marks next to the correct answers. All right. Uh, you can also, under these three dots, I always suggest clicking on the three dots to see what's in there. You can randomize your choices so kids see different. And it doesn't really make sense here because they're alphabetical, but you could randomize them um, if you feared that kids were going to look at someone else's uh, paper or something like that. And where it says show your reasoning, um, it doesn't show it here for check boxes, but if I converted this to multiple choice, you do have the option to ask students to explain their answer. And when you check that box, if I go to preview, it looks something like this. Explain your thinking will pop up. All right, which is a nice, a nice little way for them to get um, the show your reasoning. All right, maybe change that word show to explain. Uh, obviously, C, D, and E don't make sense. If I do multiple choice, uh, you might want to do a combination of C, D, D, E, and E, C. Does that get all of them? I think it might. Um, the other piece to watch out for is if you're doing an assessment, this spec, this box will be checked a lot of the times uh, by default. Show students their class, their responses. If that box is checked and you go into preview, um, you will see kids are going to share their answers with the class. So you got to make sure that that box is unchecked. Uh, otherwise, you know, everyone's going to see everyone else's answers. All right. So let's just play around with this. Um, there are ordered lists. You can do things from least to greatest and things like that. Um, if you, uh, yeah, let's go to the other one, the Eureka one. So this one is where kids have to. Uh, have some glue sticks and they want to divide them into four equal groups. So for this one, let's build up another slide here and I'm just going to call this number two and let's copy this text 
And I'm going to add a note. Once again, it might put in some weird line breaks in there, but it doesn't look like it did. And I'm going to put a picture here of just these four boxes. All right, so I'm gonna take a screenshot, go over to a sketch, change my background to a custom. All this stuff becomes a lot easier the more you do it. So building your first assessment like this will take a little bit of time, but you end up using the same tools over and over again. So the kids are going to have to draw glue sticks in here, which is fine. This works perfectly. Um, the other piece here is the structure of these questions like this. Like, how do I get them to fill in the blank here? You could include that in the drawing, uh, but if kids don't have touch screens, it's kind of clunky. So what I've been doing is this. I'll copy this text to my clipboard, and I'm going to put text input. So in this case, when I select text input, once it says uncheck this box, right, it looks something like this. Now kids can type in here. What I will do, and this seems somewhat technical, and it, it is, um, but I really want this format to show up where these, these blank spaces, there's the division symbol. If you come into the computation layer, which is like getting into like the language of Desmos, uh, one of the things that I use a lot is something called initial text. So just start typing initial text, press tab, and put two quotes. Whatever text you put inside these quotes will appear on the student end. Okay, so when I put those two quotes, let me jump back into here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste what I copied before. All right, maybe I'll put another space in here so the kids, it breaks it up. I'll hit done. And now when I hit preview, kids can actually just put in uh, these numbers into here, okay? Now there's these huge line breaks. You maybe just wanna put one line break or one underscore there so that the kids aren't typing in the middle of I don't know if that looks weird. Maybe you go back and change this to one of these so that they know there's just one number there. You're going to have to play around with that. What I like, what I like to do is um, maybe put like a, a squiggly emoji in there. Um, actually, I think I have it right here. This symbol I'll use a lot. Let me jump into here. So it's a little bit bigger than uh, just a regular underscore. All right, I'll hit done, and now I'll hit preview, and that's what it looks like for kids. I actually think this looks a little bit better. All right, like I said, play around with this. Um, you will learn a lot, and every time you do one, it'll get faster and faster and faster. Good luck.